Hi and welcome to the book bar. I'm Ann Jeanette Barr and today I'm going to be doing the booktube newbie tag. <laughs> so this is my first tag on the channel. I wanted to do it after I had a few uh, videos already posted so that you could get a feel for what my channel is like. I hope you subscribe and come back for more. Um, and if you're not familiar with tags, the way they work is that people in a community on YouTube will um, come up with a series of questions or a challenge of some kind and they will um, call it a tag and encourage other YouTubers in the same genre to make a video based on it. So this tag has been around for years and years and years. I've seen lots of people do it uh, long before I started my channel. And it's just, uh, let me see how many questions, 10? 10? 10 questions. And I have them written down so that I can refer back to them, but they'll also be in the description as well as a link to what I think is the first of the first person who um, who did the, the tag, or at least where I found the questions. But it seems like across booktube or YouTubers who talk about books, um, these questions are pretty standard. So a lot of people find each other through this tag, and I will do put a little hashtag in the description. So if you click on that, you'll be able to find other booktubers. So if you, for instance, found me and you didn't know that booktube was a thing, uh, you can click that and find other new booktubers who will hopefully lead you through their channel to other um, booktubers who are more established. So it's just a really fun feature of booktube. Um, it's a cool community and so I'm excited to participate in this, my very first tag. So question number one is why did you start this channel? Which um, has everything to do with the fact that I saw other people doing this and I think a few years ago I was following an author um, because I'm a writer and she kept referring to the community of, of friends that she had on, on YouTube as author tubers. And uh, that was new for me and I kind of, I think I even commented like, what's an author tuber? And you know, over time I found out that authors who have a presence on YouTube sometimes call themselves author tubers or author tube and they, you know, they, they're a community. They, they follow each other. They comment on each other's um, videos, which is super cool. And a couple of them are also booktubers. So they don't just talk about their own writing. They talk about the books they like. And you know, that led down a rabbit trail uh, of discovering that booktubers are this huge, big, wonderful family. And I watched booktubers for a couple of years before it occurred to me that I would be a good booktuber. <laughs> um, and it's partially because, and I covered this in another video that I did, um, I made a video about judging a book contest. While I was judging that book contest, I really enjoyed giving feedback to the authors about their work and telling them what was good and what was needed, what needed work. And then I found myself telling my friends about those books I had been reading, which was just a natural extension of the fact that my friends and I talk about books all the time. So I decided eventually that it would be a great um, opportunity to build community uh, to talk about books on YouTube, especially because one of my goals for the near future is to build up a business as um, a literary agent, a person who helps authors get signed with publishers and bring their books to life. So up until this point, I've been focusing on writing. I've done some other side things like judging the book contest for money. Um, but for the most part, I've just been building up a writing career with freelance writing and I've written a couple of books and I don't think I'll ever not write. I'm a writer, but, um, I really enjoy being able to give feedback to my fellow writers. I like being a, a you know, a, a writing partner or a beta reader, um, and just being able to kind of help them hash out their ideas. So I think being a literary agent would be a really fun extension of that. And I am taking classes with UCLA to be, get my certificate in literary representation. Um, and just as an extension of that, if I'm already talking about books, why not do it on YouTube? And, you know, maybe down the road, I'll be able to um, use this also as just a platform to meet um, other bookish people, writers, to be able to encourage people who are bookish people but not writing yet to start writing. So anyway, it's just a cool... Um, opportunity. YouTube is just so, so full of potential. Um, I'd love to eventually have a large enough following here that it 
provides a little bit of income to offset the fact that literary agents are only paid on commission. But, you know, that's down the road and I, I'm already having so much fun doing it. Um, I really love encouraging literacy uh, across all ages and, and all, all of my different friend groups. I love encouraging them to be better uh, readers and uh, to read more prolifically and just to enjoy books more. So it just feels like a good fit. So question number two is what are some fun and unique things you can bring to booktube? So kind of what makes you stand out as a booktuber? Um, I think there are several things that make me different than some of the booktubers that I follow and love. One is that um, I live in Alaska, <laughs> which just makes me different from most people. And I think people enjoy hearing about Alaskan things because the population of Alaska per capita, like for, for the land mass is just pretty small. So <laughs> when you're able to talk about Alaska, you're one of few anyway. And I do enjoy reading Alaskan books. And so I hope to be able to share about that. Um, I also am a mom of a gaggle of very bookish children. <laughs> so I have four kids. And so I read a lot of children's literature and I actually homeschool them. So I read a lot, a lot of children's literature. So I do think that I'll be able to speak to both adult books and children's books. Um, and I have a love for both. And then also I'm, I'm just an eclectic reader overall. I like most genres. I think the only genre I don't read any of is horror. And the other genres that I don't read a lot of are like, uh, I don't read a lot of romance, though I do like some. Um, I don't read a lot of paranormal. There are lots of booktubers who do even specifically love those genres. So it's cool to find booktubers who like the same things that you do so that you can get book recommendations. But I think one of the things that makes me unique is that other than those genres, I read a lot of different genres. I love fantasy and historical fiction. Actually, I think I'm getting ahead of myself because <laughs> one of these questions asked me about what I like to read. So just um, sticking to what makes me unique. Um, I do have a lot of connections already in the literary world because of writing, and I do hope to bring those connections into play here on the channel, which I think will make uh, for a fun booktube experience later on. And then kind of the last thing is that um, I, I'm calling this channel the Book Bar because my last name is Bar, but also because I just had this fun idea at the very beginning of what if I could pair books with the drinks that go with them like in my mind, like what, you know, what's the perfect drink to drink with this book. So each episode, I'm definitely going to be drinking something. But beyond that, I also want to kind of um, encourage you guys to try different drinks, both like caffeinated and decaf and alcoholic, just all the different kinds of drinks that um, that you can imagine setting an ambiance, a tone for what you're reading. So that's just going to be a fun thing to do. You can see some of my other videos. I've already started that um, kind of pairing up drinks to the mood. And I think it would be really fun in the future if you guys give me ideas, both book recommendations and then what you think would be a good book uh, drink to match with it. So. I hope that becomes a fun little tradition for us here on my booktube community. And then let's see, question number three, what are you most excited for, for this new channel? So I covered it a little in my other two answers already, but I really am excited to get some of you reading some of the things that I love or just reading more in general. That's one thing. Um, I, I hope to do that by, sharing some of my favorite really good don't miss out on before you die sorts of books that um, I think will be valuable for everyone. But I also just think that talking about reading and listening about books uh, and reading just begets more reading. So I like being a part of that community. Um, but the other things I'm excited about are making friends. I've seen a lot of people, actually some of you are already closer to me than you were before because we like to talk about books and now we can on this different format, but I hope to meet new people as well. Um, I have seen on booktube communities forming that are really becoming close friends and I just think that's really cool. And then the other thing is um, I want to get my children in on the behind the scenes aspects of this channel and occasionally in front of the camera. You've seen two of them now on camera. If you've watched every episode that I've 
um, published so far. But um, I have a very soon to be 13 year old that uh, is interested in video and audio editing and other aspects of um, all the things that go into having a YouTube channel, creating the thumbnails, learning Photoshop, uh, just all those things, and also books, of course. And I'm looking forward to, we've already started it, but I am enjoying, and one of the reasons I was looking forward to this was um, giving him an opportunity to learn some of those skills and then utilize them and be kind of a business partner. Uh, I can do all of the things I need to do, recording sound and editing film and all of those myself, but it would be really great if in the future I can outsource some of that to my children who enjoy it and who already want to. And then if we do end up experiencing any kind of income increase from YouTube, then they would be able to have some of that and put that away. And I just think that's a really cool thing for young teenagers to be able to do. So that's exciting for me and we're working it into our homeschool days. Um, number four, why do you love reading? Well, um, I love that books give us access to people and ideas and beautiful language and parts of the world that we just couldn't reach otherwise. And it's especially true right now. In the middle of this pandemic, I think we feel more separated and more connected than ever before. We have to stay apart from each other. Most of us haven't seen older relatives that we love for a very long time. Um, even here locally in town, when we see each other, it's kind of like from afar with a mask on. And so I am so grateful that we have technology, but I also, we need those shared, that a shared culture to gather around. And if we're not seeing each other in person and doing activities together, then we have to be able to talk about things together, which, you know, is fun anyway, but it's different. And, um, I have always loved that books give you that shared culture. So not only is our Western culture influenced by great literature throughout history, when you stay on top of new literature, you, you have a springboard for conversations that are really important and um, kind of a middle ground or like a safe place to be able to discuss them, discuss them from. Um, and if you have read a lot of classic literature or literature from the from times past, then you have that foundation to reference back to as well. Um, I just love that about books and I love that uh, it's almost forming community with people who are gone, you know, it's a way to stay connected to the people who have already passed on, um, who are influential. So I definitely get a little sentimental about feeling like Books are my friends, authors are my friends, even if they don't know me. <laughs> I love it. I just love what literature can bring to our lives and how much it can enrich us. So number five, what book or series got you reading? Well, my mom tells me that I loved a series when I was a child called The Munch Bunch. <laughs> So if you have ever heard of the Munch Bunch, you better let me know in a comment because I've never met anyone else who loved those books, but evidently I did and I can actually still remember the feel of the spines, so I think she must have been right. <laughs> I think I was a little obsessed with those picture books, but my mom also told me that um, I'm the oldest in um, my family that unit that grew up together. I do have an older sibling that I didn't grow up with who I'm close to now, but um, because I was the oldest, my mom had time, I guess, um, with me when I was little, and she taught me to read when I was three, she says, or four, <laughs> somewhere, like, that's when she started. So I know she read to me a lot. So I really do think my mom instilled that in me. And then I don't think I ever really lost a love of reading, but I do have some memories of books and, and bookish moments that I loved that have stuck with me. Um, I remember, second grade being read Charlotte's Web, and third grade being read Mr. Popper's Penguins, and both of those books are still favorites. I love reading them to each of my children when they get to be that age. Um, I think fourth grade my favorite was Island of the Blue Dolphins, and I reread that again last year with my daughter, and it was still really impactful. Um, I liked The Giver in fifth grade. <laughs> See, I can like measure my years by which books I loved. Um, 
And then I, I just have lots of fond memories of reading, of keeping track of my reading and like challenging myself to read more, um, of going to the library um, and trying to read like an entire shelf of books, things like that. I've always loved reading. Oh, I just had so many more books that just flooded into my memory. So I think that uh, those are some of the books that really captured my imagination. And then um, as an adult, I only had a small window where I didn't read a lot of fiction and I think it was during those college years when I was just focused a lot on my school books and then early motherhood when I just felt like I didn't know what I was doing because I didn't and I needed to read all of the books about parenting and all the aspects of, of mothering um, and I just would just I check out stacks and stacks of books from the library and they were all nonfiction and I just peruse them for the things I, I the little tidbits I wanted and felt like I needed so um, I'd say I started reading fiction again uh, maybe maybe when I was 26 or so and it was partially out of an interest uh, in potentially writing fiction I had already been re writing nonfiction but I kind of had this inkling of like I think I might enjoy writing fiction, but I think I need to read a lot more with that in mind to kind of get a feel for writing from that angle because you read differently when you're thinking about writing than when you're just enjoying the book. So um, so I did start reading a lot more fiction at that point. So I'm a lot older than 26 now, so I've been reading a lot for a long time. <laughs> okay, number six. What questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? So, um, if I got the chance to chat in person with my favorite booktubers or on the phone, I think I would want to know, of course, their advice for getting started, but more specifically, I'd love to know what it was that you feel like you can look back and attribute your growth to what resonated, I guess, with the audience that made them want to um, come back and watch you video after video. So I know that each of us have to figure that out for ourselves and just be ourselves, but I am curious. Um, I would love to know from each of those booktubers what they think that was for them. And then um, I guess a question would be, how do you balance your reading time and talking about reading. Because I know some book booktubers will put up a, a video a day, and I think if I did that, I wouldn't have time to read. So I'm not looking for um, a schedule that's that full right now, uh, because I do have a lot of other things that are going on, and I'm um, a full-time homeschooler in addition to taking classes, and I have other things that I know I have to prioritize at this point. So I do think I'll be sticking to one or two videos a week. but. Someday in the future, that would be a fun goal, and I wonder how they find time for reading. So I guess that's the other thing I would ask. Question number seven is, what challenges of starting a YouTube, cha YouTube channel do you think will be most difficult to overcome? So actually, it goes right back to what I was saying in that last question of uh, just, I have limited time. So I do think that staying on top of regular posting could be a challenge, but I've tried to overcome that by publishing um, things that I've recorded ahead of time. So as I record this, I still have other videos that I haven't posted that I've already recorded. So I'm trying to um, always have one waiting in the wings at least uh, that I can edit and put up without having to record something new. So um, I think that's just a good practice in general. <laughs> I have a scratch on my face. You might be able to see it through my makeup. I had planned on um, recording a couple of days ago and then I got this big <laughs> scratch on my face and I thought oh people are just going to notice that and like it's going to be um distracting and so sorry if it's distracting now <laughs> and so uh I was able to just wait a couple of days and let that kind of heal a little before I tried to to record something or like if you get sick or you get busy or anything so I do think that will be a challenge but I, I'm trying to have a plan to tackle it. And then the other things are that have already been um, a challenge, but I'm overcoming them, is learning about editing. I had to learn a new program. Ages ago, I had a YouTube channel, um, and I did hair tutorials. And then people like got real serious about YouTube, and I stopped doing them because people were like... <laughs> making movies instead of like chatty videos and I got intimidated and I just got busy I think 
I had my third baby right about the time that I was um, starting to do those those videos. Back then, I was able to just plop things up online and there wasn't as much competition, so it was it wasn't super it, it didn't intimidate me to have mediocre videos. And then last year I decided I was ready to start trying to do YouTube again, and so I thought I might do videos about living in Alaska and raising ducks and just all the fun things that we do outdoors. <laughs> and then I realized it's only light outside for half the year here, you guys. It's dark the other half of the year. And when it is light outside, it's not light outside. It's murky. It's <laughs> we. I live in a, a, um, a temperate rainforest, and so it's always cloudy. And it's raining half the time, which isn't conducive for filming outdoors. So I made a couple of videos and I gave up. But even in those videos, I had to learn a new program. I was using iMovie. And then my ancient... MacBook died on me. And so when I started making these videos again, I had to learn a whole new program. So I'm using DaVinci Resolve for my editing right now, and I may move over to the Adobe Suite at some point, but it's working well for me, but that was definitely something I had to overcome. And then the lighting is its own issue. I've got four lights on me right now. <laughs> and every time I record a video with fewer lights than this, I just think it's so dark, but I, I can't do what a lot of YouTubers do, which is just like stand in front of an open window because it's just always kind of gloomy outside. So um, that is a challenge. And then the fact that I have four children and three indoor pets, um, you know, sound issues can be a challenge. And so I have a microphone. So there's just kind of the technical aspects of um, making YouTube videos that require a lot of time and a lot of practice and you get better and better with each video so if you're just starting out just keep on going but um, yeah it's a, that's a challenge it's a real challenge and a fun challenge okay uh, question number eight is when did you start reading and I already answered that inadvertently so I think about three <laughs> and I'll wait to answer the rest of this question because my dog is barking the dog is barking because there's a snowplow going by, and obviously snowplows are super exciting. So yeah, I was about three. And just to give a little bit more, I guess, to be able to answer this question partially, um, the things that got me back into reading when I came out of my slump of not reading much fiction were um, fantasy, uh, young adult books, and inspirational fiction and I just found those to be kind of a gentle re-entry into the world of literature so if you're looking for advice for com coming back into reading if you haven't been reading much I would say pick up something that is maybe a fast read or a little bit easier like young adult fiction um, and if you're not into those other um, genres that I mentioned try like cozy mystery or something so um, question number nine is where do you read so where do I not read? Um, I did until a couple of days ago. I have a favorite spot on the couch that was right by the only window that gets sun most of the day, but I had to relinquish it because the dog also loves that window and he just sits there and barks at the world. So we rearranged the living room. So I'm not, that's not my reading spot anymore, but um, still that same couch is a frequent reading spot. And then, um, we have a pellet stove that is my source of life <laughs> and I stand next to it half the day with a warm drink because I live in Alaska. So you can actually often find me reading while standing <laughs> in front of the pellet stove. And then I do read most nights before bed um, as, as does my husband so that doesn't bother him too much. Um, and then I have a Kindle that's backlit which is like the world's best invention ever. And so I do read in bed sometimes long after he's gone to sleep. <laughs> and before the pandemic, I kept books or at least my e-reader in my purse and I would read in the waiting room or waiting for kids to come out of lessons. So that's that. And question number 10, the last question is, what kind of books do you like to read? So again, I kind of covered this in another question. I'm a very eclectic reader. I like a lot of books. I like things that make me think, even if they're just a, a fun story, even if they're fiction and not meant to be heavy hitting, I like when they get me interested in a topic I wasn't interested in before. Um, 
teach me something about something that I didn't expect to want to learn about. I, I just really love books that have a lot of hidden gems in them beyond just the plot or the character development. So I love when they, when they can fit something random like um, search and rescue or herbalism or, you know, like teach you something about physics or just something where it's like, oh, I, I, didn't, I wasn't even looking to learn that. Um, I really enjoy that. So I like most genres and I do um, like reading a wide variety of books. So I'm always reading more than one at once. I'm always reading a fiction and a, and a couple of nonfiction so that I can kind of go back and forth by my mood. And you can read, you can watch my video about what I plan to read in 2021 here on this channel and also the fact that I read 170 books in 2020 and in that I kind of dug into the genres that I read and, and what I enjoyed from them. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about me and if you've done one of these bookish newbie, bookish newbie, booktube newbie videos, tell me about it in the comments, link to it, I want you to, so that we can find you and so that I can find you. And um, if any of these questions that I answered struck you as, oh, that's the same way I feel about it, let me know. I would love to make friends and community here uh, on the book bar and I, I will answer all of your um, comments, I promise. I am just really looking forward to getting to know everyone. So thanks for um, being with me. And I always end my videos saying, leave me a comment and tell me what you're reading and what's in your cup.